So we just went and got all the stuff we're gonna need because we have super big plans. Okay, here we go. You good? We're hitting it. You ready? What we're gonna do is we're gonna build some fence and we're gonna actually test concepts. So we're gonna build some wide op braces the old fashioned way and then we're gonna build some braces out of pipe. We're gonna drive all the posts and then we're gonna run a car into it and see which one holds up better. I have my pick on the metal fence. So what we're trying to do is bring awareness to the better ways to build fence. Wide op is not doing it right. Most of the DOTs around the world not doing fence right. We're gonna show you the correct way, not the farmer way, but not the wide out way, but the correct way to build a really good high quality fence. So we just picked up all this stuff over here. We've got our standard wide out brace posts here. We've got some cross pieces, the struts, whatever you wanna call them. Um, and then below we have all the metal pipe to build a high quality fence along with high tensile wire versus the low carbon, heavier duty looking wire that YDOT requires. And this is, the stuff farmers are using are, is usually a lot lighter than that even. So we'll show you a little bit of the farmer way, a little bit of the YDOT way. And then we're gonna show you the way we think you guys should be building fence to get the absolute toughest fence, bowl tough. That's what we're looking for. So we went and tried to find a Ford Taurus. We really struggled trying to find a Ford Taurus, you know, cause Taurus the bowl. Yeah, I get it. But we did find a Chevy Impala. And that's going to be our goal for these tests. All these forest boats are going four feet in. One, two, three. Listen. All right, so we just got done using our strain right, strainer board. Stretch up the wire. We got some hopefully fairly tidy knots. Not too crappy weld all the way down. Proper terminations. We've got nice easy twist ties. And down here, we've got the same thing. And it's loaded up. We should have probably driven these so that they were a little bit out of plumb. But at any rate, and I should have probably recorded how much they flexed. We did get quite a bit of flex out of this one, but it's because I didn't bend it back like I should have. We'll see where we're at now. Right now we're, I don't know, if I'd have, if I'd have put that in there, we'd have been about plumb now, but we're about a quarter of a bubble off. So that was my bad. And you can see as far as tension's concerned, yeah, two, between two and 250. Could have maybe got a little tighter, but bins as this is only about a 40 or 50 foot run, that's not too bad. We'll go build that other fence down there, the crappy Y-Dot style. Or Y-Dot, standard farmer, the farmer special, whatever you want to call it. We'll build that, then we'll be ready to do some testing. Let's talk about the way this is being done. Typical fashion is to saw a notch in here, which we will then put our rail in. As you can see, this is a this actually came from a Y dot approved treater, and it's garbage. Post is absolute trash. No treat. We've already cut through all the treats, so that opens us up to the elements and makes it so that we could end up having failure right here. But the other thing we see is is that a lot of the beginners and poor fence builders don't know how to fit these well, and they've got crappy saws, and so you'll end up having the rail up here. Well, go ahead and just throw one in there. And if they don't fit it right, you'll have all kinds of gaps and it'll just look nasty. And if it doesn't fit flush, it's not doing its job. It uh, can let the post twist, so. And that's what you see if you go back and inspect all these. Now, what we're gonna do at the other end is we'll show you a better way to do that where you don't cut into the treat and you're not relying on nails to hold that rail in there. You actually have some pins. So. The very least YDOT could do is switch to a different style where you're not cutting through the treat if they're gonna insist on using wood posts. Three nails, these are, I don't know. How long are these nails? These aren't 40 D. I can't remember if they call it 40 or 60 D. We're gonna make dang good and sure we build it. 
at least up to spec so six inch whatever that is and they don't help that well we could accomplish all this with the brace pin. Okay, got it. So here, instead of cutting our notches, we just drove a 3 8 brace pin about back to there. On this side, we'll leave the brace pin out a little bit. So this is the farmer brace. We'll call it the farmer brace with the twist because we're going to use brace pins instead of doing it the farmer way and notching them in. Just see if it makes a difference, which I don't think it will. We'll leave this one out about that far, and then we can hang our twitch wire on that. Two wraps of barbless wire. We'll do two wraps same way. Obviously we're going to tie off to this post here. We pull that way so the twitch wires run diagonally this way to be able to help us at all. So here's what we're using for the field test. Class one. ASTM specifications. So it's got a top and a bottom wire, nine gauge, and it doesn't matter. It's nothing against HW. It's just all low carbon wires, trash. That's really all there is to it. That was great back when they were settling the planes, but that's not where we're at today. We've come a long ways. Grandpa's way of doing things is no longer the best way of doing things. They don't make butter by churning it every day anymore. But that's still the way we're building fence because some engineer somewhere at some point in time decided this is the way we need to be building barbed wire fence. They learned from their grandpa and so the engineer really didn't put a lot of thought into it. He just said, yeah, that's the way we're gonna do it. And they're wrong. If you're an engineer, this is the wrong way to build fence. You do not build barbed wire fence like this. Even if you're gonna use wood, doing diagonals like that is much more effective. But the fun part's when we get it tested. I have no idea what's gonna happen. I've never intentionally run a car head on into a fence, let alone two different types of fence right next to each other. The best way to cut these is to cut that wire right there. However, I don't have Nipix pliers, I have these. So the other best way is to cut halfway in between each one of these stays like I've done fold this over as far as you can get it. Take your plier and bend that around and that kind of unlocks that joint. It allows this to freely slide off. Uh, sometimes you have to kind of straighten out these tension crimps. But that allows you to get these fixed knots off. Okay. So we showed you how we tie off high tensile wire. Nice, neat and clean. Leaving all these on there, that's pretty much standard practice in the farm and YDOT or DOT in general. I say I pick on YDOT and that's only because I know YDOT, but all the DOTs basically run the same crap. All this passes, you got a double wrap, you got four twists, you're good to go. Uh, this wire here, this is 832 and I think that's maybe 839 or something like that. So they've got the same amount of line wires, just the difference is low carbon. Uh, and these are a lot heavier than the 12 and a half gauge high carbon, high tensile wires over there. So how they hold up, we'll see. This is a strainer board, strain rack. Farm Fit Solutions can hook you up with one. If you've never seen one, this is like a newfangled two by four. Grandpa's been nailing two by fours together and using that to the wire for a while. And then came along the wedge boards that you drove wedges down this way, but this, is about a hundred times better than one of those pieces of crap. There again, it's about having the right tools to do the job. And we can pull on this thing like crazy. And we will. Only with this low carbon wire. We'll see what kind of attention we can get on it. It just starts stretching on the low carbon wire. High carbon wire will stretch and it'll just hit its breaking point and break. This stuff will just stretch and stretch and stretch and stretch. 
So chances are when we hit this thing, it'll just stretch it all out and maybe break it and the ends will all be fine. That's what will happen. And I don't want to hear any crap about my tire today because when you do work around your house, do you get all your hard hat and everything on? No, you don't. You just are cautious about what you're doing. I weld and all this stuff, I don't have a burn on me. Being cautious about what I'm doing. It's the same way we put up razor wire. We'll put up razor wire in our t-shirts because if you wear all the thick clothing and stuff, you get too aggressive with it and then it'll jab into you really bad. You wear a t-shirt and you're really cautious and really careful. And wrap that around there. You can see this. Bottom wire is always a joy. Always a joy. A bundle of joy. Yeah. It's stiff, nine gauge, trying to wrap it. But we didn't cut any corners. We actually drove the posts deeper than what we need to drive them. We used longer posts than we needed to on the wide out stuff. Nobody can accuse us. We got all the nails in there. So if it fails and doesn't perform as well as the other one, it won't be because we didn't try. Okay. Hallelujah. Do we think the barbed wire matters? I don't know. I'm not gonna put the barbed wire on because that is not gonna save this fence. Boom. And these are shooting nine gauge staples, so it's not like little girl staples. See, that's a pretty good fit right there. And some of the fits are even worse than that. When you go look a highway fence, that's a pretty good fit, but there's still, there's daylight. That's a really good fit. And that's a pretty good fit. But there are some crap fits. I've seen some where there's a half inch gap. It's absolute trash. So just avoid notching all together. So for the people that haven't ever seen these, these are easy twist. These ties don't come off. Which is good because we're gonna run a car into this. We don't want anything failing premature. Somebody saying we didn't tie the fence good enough or something. Bingo. She's tight. This is not like I pulled it with my hands and I got it super tight tight. This is like I pulled it with a truck and got it tight tight. That's some tight wire. I got them both really snug. Well, well, hey. We didn't measure it after. Okay, maybe it loosened up and maybe this is all slack now. Ah, oh, I bet that Olsen, he just didn't get it tight. Yeah, I'm gonna say we're, we're between 150 and 200, so. That's good and tight. If you think you get your wire tight, get one of these and find out if you really get it tight. You might be surprised at how tight you don't get it. Protect, brought to you by Protect, the P240T, the pounder. That thing's a beast. If you need a skid steer pounder, that's the one for you and you can come talk to us. We can get you hooked up with that, tornado wire, strain ride stuff, whatever you saw. If you saw any of it today, we can get you hooked up here at SWI. Anyhow, tomorrow we wreck some stuff. Tomorrow it's on. We're taking that car over there and we're gonna ram it right into the fence and we're gonna see what happens. You good? We're hitting it. You ready? Oh, 